How do you conduct an economic evaluation? In this section, we will take a closer look at data, models, appraising evidence, and considering your audience. What are the steps in conducting an economic evaluation? Recall from the past section that economic evaluations consider the costs and outcomes of different interventions or actions. Start with a definition of the decision problem. The appropriate health outcome must be selected. Recall that economic evaluations differ in how they consider outcomes. Determine the perspective to be adopted. If a societal perspective is adopted, all costs are included, regardless of the payer. Under this perspective, costs incurred by patients are included. An example of a societal cost is a patient paying for parking at the hospital and missing work to attend an appointment. In the payer perspective, only costs incurred by the health system payer are considered. In Canada, typically this would be a provincial ministry of health. An institutional perspective can also be adopted, for example, a single hospital. Next, design the model. In the figure, we show an example of what a simple Markov model may look like. We will describe this model structure and others in more detail later. Next, populate the model parameters with appropriate data. Finally, the robustness of the model structure, data, and assumptions are tested in an uncertainty or sensitivity analysis. This is done by running the model with alternative input data or ranges of data and varying key model assumptions. The decision problem is a key part of setting up the analysis. It is similar to a research question, but includes several key specifications. The CADF guidelines for the economic evaluation of health technology state, the decision problem statement should provide a comprehensive specification of the interventions to be compared, the settings in which they are to be compared, the perspective of the evaluation, which costs and outcomes are to be considered, the time horizon, and the target population for the evaluation. The decision problem should be clearly stated. In the past section, we defined the different types of economic evaluation based on what outcome measure is used. As quality adjusted life years, or qualies, are a very commonly used outcome measure, we will focus now on quality measurement. As we briefly discussed previously, a quality adjusted life year, or quality, is a measure that combines quality of life and length of life and is the outcome measure used in cost utility analysis, which is often the preferred method of health technology assessment agencies. We will describe further how qualities are measured. Quality of life, or health utility, is typically measured by asking people about how they feel. There are three commonly used validated survey tools for measuring health-related quality of life, called the European Quality of Life 5 Dimension, EQ5D, the 36-item Short Form Survey, or SF36, or the Health Utilities Index Mark III, or HUE III. Increasingly, these survey tools are being incorporated into clinical trial design to enable economic evaluations. The questions asked in the EQ5D are shown as an example. They ask respondents to define how they feel across five domains, mobility, self-care, usual activities, pain or discomfort, and anxiety or depression. Qualies are calculated by estimating the life expectancy for a patient following a particular treatment or intervention and weighting their life expectancy with a health utility score. The chart shows how qualies can be conceptualized and calculated. Health utility is shown on the y-axis and time is shown on the x-axis. An intervention that improves either quality of life, life expectancy, or both can increase qualies. How are economic evaluation models constructed? Also called decision analytic models, these models are simplified frameworks for understanding real world problems. They are most commonly structured as either a decision tree or a Markov model. Let's take a closer look at decision trees first, as shown in the diagram. Decision trees use branches to depict a cascade of events. A decision tree structure may be most appropriate for shorter time horizons or discrete one-time events. Decision trees start with the decision node, from which the interventions being evaluated branches away. Next is the cascade of relevant clinical events, such as a complication, which occur at chance nodes. 
Costs and outcomes are calculated at each terminal node where the model ends and are weighted by the probability of reaching that node. In the diagram, the probability of traveling down the branch is the number shown underneath the label and the hashtag is used to represent 1 minus the probability of the other branch or branches, as the total probability must sum to 1. In our simple example, the probability of a patient undergoing a complication and surviving, the topmost branch, is the product of the probability of having a complication, 0.1, and the probability of surviving the complication, 0.95 yielding 0.095, or 9.5%. The probability that they have a complication and die would be 0.1 times 0.05, or 0 0.005, or 0.5%, and so on for each terminal node. The number shown at the terminal node represents the health utility at that node, which would be applied to the relevant time horizon, and each terminal node would also be associated with a cost. Costs and outcomes for each intervention are calculated across all the terminal nodes into a total and then compared, commonly reported as an ICER, which was introduced previously. Specific training on building decision trees are provided in the readings. Markov models are another decision analysis tool and are more commonly used for chronic diseases and longer time horizons. The model is conceptualized as having distinct health states that are relevant to the disease pathway. The time horizon is composed of multiple cycles, as relevant to the disease. For example, you could have a time horizon of 5 years with a cycle length of 1 year. In this case, there would be 5 cycles. After each cycle, patients may transition from one health state to another, or remain in their current state, as appropriate. In our simple example, the health states are healthy, sick, or dead. Death is an absorbing state, meaning patients can't cycle out of it. Let's assume we are analyzing a cohort of 100 patients. Transition probabilities between the health states are shown in the figure. We also assume that patients all start in the healthy state. This is the type of assumption that is important to clearly describe. We will talk more about modeling assumptions later. There is a 10% chance that patients leave the healthy state after one year, and a 90% chance they remain in that health state. After the first year, 10 patients would therefore transition to the sick state and once in the sixth state, they may transition to the death state. After five years, which is five cycles in our example, patients have left the healthy state, transitioned sickness, and then death. This is shown in the table. Each health state is associated with a cost and a utility value, as shown in the table. Patients have lower costs and higher health utility when they are in the healthy state compared to the sixth state. We multiply the number of patients in that state by the cost and utility of values associated with the state and then calculate the total. To compare between two interventions, the model will be run again for the comparator. If a comparator has different transition probabilities, the costs and qualities will be different. We intuitively understand that increasing the probability of staying in the healthy state will decrease costs and increase qualities. It's worth noting that this is a very simplified example. Hopefully it has introduced you to the basic model structures and given you a sense of the types of simplifying assumptions and input data that are required to make a model. Economic evaluation synthesizes clinical and economic evidence. The selection of appropriate clinical data flows from similar hierarchies used in evidence-based medicine to develop treatment guidelines, and guidelines are often used to design models. A hierarchy of evidence is shown in the pyramid. Where does the economic data come from? Costs are obtained from a variety of sources, including administrative databases, such as those held by the Canadian Institute for Health Information, or ICES in Ontario, locally held databases, like those held within hospitals, the schedule of benefits to obtain physician costs, formularies to obtain drug costs, Wage data, as would be used in a productivity analysis, could be obtained from Statistics Canada. And then there are empirical costing studies and other published literature that can be drawn on as needed. Checklists can be used to ensure economic modeling exercises have followed best practices for methods and reporting. References are provided for learners to refer to the guidelines if needed. The CHEERS checklist is the most commonly used for assessing reporting quality and has 17 different items.
models of high quality will typically clearly report the objective, the target population, the time horizon, the perspective, the comparators, the choice of outcomes and effectiveness measures, measurement of resource use, the discount rate, currency, and price date, assumptions, analytic methods, and the uncertainty analysis. When conducting economic evaluations, it's important to understand the target audience or end users and their objectives. Economic evaluations can be used as part of a health technology assessment process to aid local decision making, to add to the academic literature, or to inform decision making outside of formal processes such as HTA, for example, at a pharmacy and therapeutics committee within a hospital or a health unit. If an economic evaluation is part of an HTA process, following guidelines for that HTA body is important. To summarize, economic evaluations synthesize clinical and economic data. Economic evaluation methods require specialized training, but non-experts can be familiar with the modeling process and use checklists to guide their appraisal of quality and reporting. Economic evaluations will be used by a variety of audiences and considerations of the needs of the audience is important. This concludes section one, part four. Please proceed to part five, what is budget impact analysis?